never know how God is going to use someone. God can use anyone with a willing heart. You can rise above your past. You can rise above your reputation. You can rise above your choices. God raised Rahab up. Yes, he did. He gave her a heart to help his servants, and in helping them, she opened up her own life for God to be able to help her and her entire family. The takeaway from this is always be ready to help God's people. No matter what, no matter when you're called upon, be ready. Be courageous and ready to serve. Like another woman I recall. Huh. Unique and brave. Her story nearly leaps off the pages. God told Joshua in his Torah that no man shall be able to stand before him all the days of his life. He said, if I was with Moses, I would be with you. I would never leave you, nor would I forsake you. You know, that's a promise for us too. But even though Joshua has died, we must remember what God has done for us. When he brought us out of bondage, out of the land of Egypt, and send us to the land of Canaan, a land flowing with milk and honey. We're in the promised land, but we refuse to take full possession of this land. Everyone does what is right in their own eyes. My, help us, Lord. Oh, excuse me if I put down my Torah. And I get my fan. It's hot. It's hot in here. I sit on this bench between the palm trees because I see a crowd of people who wants to come and speak with me. My name is Deborah, but they call me B, only because they love the sweetness of God's word. Some of our people stopped following the words of this Torah and adopted many idols of this land. That is why God delivered us into the hands of this evil army, Commander Sisera. People come to me all day for help and advice, wanting to hear what the Lord has to say, since we are oppressed and need deliverance once again. But remember, my people, the Lord our God is one. He's a jealous God, and we should have no other God before him. This is a warning to my people. Leave your evil ways and return to God. The king of this land has made life so hard for the Israelites. We must remember the words that have been placed on our hearts. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. You know the Lord our God is with us wherever we go. Remember that, my people. But oh, I have a task to do. I have a task. The Lord gave me a task. Commander Barak, Commander Barak, where are you? I called for him before dawn because I have a message for him from the Lord. His name means lightning, and when the Lord sends lightning, the people obey. What? What did you say, Labrador, my husband? I know. That army, that army commander, Barak, dare refuse me as God's judge and prophet. God appointed me, a woman, as a judge and prophet. But I know, Lord, I know. I'll put him in the back of my mind and focus on what you need me to do. Let me share this story with you, my people. Two men came before me under false pretenses. They both gambled and stole from each other. So I asked one, how can you claim someone else's property for your gain? The other one said, I stole a goat because I wanted to buy something nice for my wife. So I told him the best thing that you can do for your wife is to give her what she really expects from you. 
and that's yourself. You should notice when she's tired, and you should honor her for everything she does for you and your seven children. Seven children. And you out here st stealing and gambling. I didn't judge them harshly. I just told both of them to stop. Stop what they're doing. Stop stealing and gambling. Repay each other. And by all means, stay away from the Amalekites forever. I mean, stay away forever. So Commander Barak, he finally comes, he finally shows up. And Commander Barak, this is the message that I have for you from the Lord. It's not my message, it's from the Lord. You are to march to Mark Tabor and take with you 10,000 men, the Lord God Jehovah will entice Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, to encounter you with his chariots and troops, but God will put him into your power. Oh, Commander Barah, oh, he looked so terrified. He was so afraid. He was so nervous, you could see it. He was nervous. He shook his head. And I said, Commander, are you refusing to obey God's orders? You have to give battle. Just remember what the Lord said. The Lord told you not to be afraid, nor be dismayed. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord. And he's enticing the troops, but he's going to put you into his power. The man of Barak paced, and he finally said, I'll go. I'll go in battle. I'll go if you go with me. And I'm going to say, what do you mean? I'm a woman. You know women don't go into battle, and that's not my role. But all right, all right, I say, okay. In order to encourage you, I'm going to battle with you. But remember this. Even though you gain the victory, Cicero will be beaten by a woman, and there goes your glory. And that woman would not be me. Commander Barack, come on, let's go. It's time for us to go to battle. Let's grab the Torah, and we're going to march with the troops. And we're going to sing, Almighty Fortress is our God. Remember this. No matter what you are going through, any kind of battle that you're going through, the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Yeah. Almighty Fortress is our God. Almighty Fortress is our God. 